Aeromechanical Engineers at AeroVironment, and I'm here with Ben Pippenberg, our technical lead and aeromechanical engineer, Jeremy Tyler, another aeromechanical engineer, and we are um, a small part, but a big part of the development team for the Ingenuity Mars helicopter. Ingenuity is an unmanned helicopter operating currently on Mars in tandem with Perseverance rover that landed this February and has been operating all the way up until now. It's very difficult to design something to fly on Mars. First of all, Mars is very far away. Mars is currently 240 million miles away, and it takes 43 minutes for a radio signal at the speed of light to travel from Earth to Mars and back. And for that reason, Ingenuity is completely autonomous. Mars also has a very thin atmosphere. It does have an atmosphere, but it's about 1% the density of what we have on Earth, which is very similar to flying at about 100,000 feet. So JPL has a, uh, a very famous test facility. Uh, they call the 25-foot space simulator. And it's a, a gigantic vacuum tank. It's 25 feet in diameter and about 80 feet tall. And what you see in the top left corner is the helicopter's view of the ground. And all those markings on the ground are giving it something to track. It's using entirely optical navigation and inertial stabilization. This is the, the team building some of the core components and these are the actual ones that are on Mars right now. What Sarah is holding in that picture on the left is the essentially the heart of the helicopter. So it's a, a structural mass that goes from the very bottom all the way up to the solar panel mount. And then it houses all of the controls. So the swash plates and servos and motors are all on that um, uh, structure that she's holding right there. We delivered this to JPL where they installed all the avionics. And then we came back and installed the blades, landing gear, solar panel uh, to make it look a little bit more like a helicopter. Um, one thing of note is that the fuselage is nothing but a, a, a thin mylar uh, film around a very lightweight cage. It, uh, it serves only as a um, insulator to keep the electronics and the batteries from freezing. And, uh, and that airspace is the, is the only insulation. Uh, we actually considered aerogel, but it was determined to be too heavy. Um, and uh, luckily with the near vacuum of Mars, um, we have a near perfect thermos. Perseverance drops Ingenuity onto the surface of Mars, and at that point, Ingenuity is a standalone spacecraft. It has to recharge its batteries, it has to heat the avionics, and it has to survive the very harsh radiation, UV environment, dust environment, and do all of this uh, fully autonomously. Finally, on April 19th, um, after about eight years of blood, sweat, and tears, hard work, uh, Ingenuity was finally ready for its first flight, and that's the video that you see here. It's a very simple takeoff, hover three meters above the ground for 30 seconds, and then land. Uh, but this very simple flight is essentially the validation for the entire program uh, and the hundreds of people that have been working on this. Currently, we have orbiters that uh, travel around the planet and take really great uh, high-level imagery, but what this lacks is uh, the really good uh, surface level details. The picture that you can see on the right shows the flight path of the helicopter. Ingenuity flew over a few of these features here to get you know, both imagery, but also you can pull out distance data, um, relative sizes of features and things like that. So since that first flight, Ingenuity has flown a total of 12 times. Nobody on the team thought that this was going to happen because um, the helicopter was really only designed for five flights and it was really only because uh, everything worked as well as it did that we had that opportunity to keep on, uh, keep on operating the helicopter. We're expanding the envelope of the vehicle even further. We have been flying the helicopter in places that the rover can't get to where there's potentially high value science targets and providing that information back to the science team both for rover path planning as well as just standalone science data.